so this is a major issue if you bring the renowned Pokemon experts, including Lean Heart. There was the guy who actually opened the box um, and some other individuals. Obviously, the one selling the box is Logan Paul's personal Pokemon guru. He calls himself Crypto King. Uh, and there's this Asian guy who's supposedly an expert as well. Uh, this really does bring to the forefront whether or not you know what you're buying. Um, it could very well be that you're buying from an expert like this individual and a bunch of other Pokemon experts like Lean Heart check the box out and say, hey, you know, it's legit. And you don't open the box until after you give the cast away. And you're stuck with a product that is fake and that is worth almost no money because the cards are printed in 2020, which is not a good sign for a $400,000 product. Um, one of the things that I will go ahead and mention, a lot of people are investing a lot of money into collectible items they really do not understand. This group of investors, this four people, um, don't really understand Pokemon. And one of them, um, the one on the left, says that the only reason he even knows about Pokemon cards is because he saw the Logan Paul video, which I suspect a lot of people, that was their first introduction to Pokemon cards as an investable investment vehicle. Now, this guy is also in crypto. That guy's in crypto. I mean, at the end of the day, crypto has kind of a bad rep. Not because crypto is bad itself, but because there's been lots and lots of Ponzi schemes, lots of scammers. Uh, BitConnect, if you want to know, uh, BitConnect was a giant Ponzi scheme. And then there was another one. Um, I'm going to go to the company man. And that one was the even bigger scheme. Um, I mean... You just have so many various schemes going awry in crypto. So when I look at people who are, you know, young and they're not vastly educated and they're just trying to make a fast dollar, this is what I think about. I think about, oh, they must be into crypto. And a lot of people, they will say, hey, actually, it wasn't the company man. He doesn't do topics like this. It was uh, Code Fusion. Uh, Code Fusion, the channel. And so Wirecard Fraud, that was a wire, wire card recently. Um, let's see. Um, here's some Wi-Fi, Wirecard, WeWork, which was basically a scam. Firefest. Um, young, oh, here. Fake Bitcoin. Crypto scam. A girl, $15 billion this uh, woman from India stole. Fake Bitcoin, how this woman scammed the world, then vanished. And that's exactly what I, I think of. When I think about crypto, I think it's a great idea, but there's just so many scammers involved that like, are you really buying a crypto coin? <laughs> are you really, do you really have Bitcoin coins in your wallet? I mean, even in India, I get phone calls all the time from India about, hey, do you want to invest in crypto? You know, and obviously I know it's a scam. But, uh, I mean, one of the biggest scams coming from India is this crypto scam where you pay this person for the Bitcoin and then supposedly it's in your wallet, but it's a fake wallet because it's just a design to make you believe that you have crypto. And then when you go cash out many months later, you can't find the same dude. So crypto is absolutely um, filled of scams. Now, again, I, I like the idea of crypto, but um, until... The, there's less scammers, it uh, will always be what it is. So am I surprised that this crypto group is really interested in Pokemon? No, because they've been interested in magic before. They've been interested in other stuff. And when you make your millions of dollars, if you do, on crypto, it seems like everything in life should be that easy. You just buy it and then sometime, and then it became you know, from $100 to $10,000 and now you're good. So... Um, I think it is uh, very sad what is happening to uh, communities. It is very sad, but at the same time, it is what it is, right? Um, I can't change this behavior. Um, I can't change uh, what people are doing. I can't change any of this stuff. Neither can you. People are going to be attracted to the quick dollar. 
Um, that has always been true, and that will be true in this case as well. Uh, the one thing that I really want to speak out against is um, when someone enters a hobby only to make money from it, MTG Finance, and they don't have any connection to the hobby, that's a bad sign for everyone in the hobby. Yes, your cards may go up in price. Yes, you might be able to sell for more. But it's a bad sign because you don't really want those people in the hobby. And secondly, um, here's the point that I can really take away is if a group of experts cannot decide if a box, one of the most scrutinized boxes in all gaming history, the first edition Pokemon base box is tampered with, you have no chance. If Lean Heart cannot decide that this box is fake without having to open into it, you have no chance. And I love the story. I think it's actually pretty um, interesting. And, you know, I have benefited from the Pokemon upsurge. I mean, definitely, there, 100%, there is a growth in Pokemon. There's. No doubt in my mind that Pokemon has exceeded my wildest expectations of growth. Not in my wildest dreams could I imagine Pokemon cards selling, especially the bulk cards I had, for the amount of money they're currently selling for. I, I just doesn't make sense to me. It's still, I mean, I look at it, I shake my head, and I say, you know what? I just, just consider myself blessed. It's almost like when all those reserve lists, crappy cards went up. And just by, you know, having a store, you, you get a lot of those crappy cards because no one buys them, but, you know, you still get them in. So people sell it to you, but no one buys them. And then one day, everyone is interested in buying them. So that is a good day to wake up to. But at the same time, I think it is very, very weird. Um, I mean, this is more than my home. This box costs more than most people's homes. And for it to be resealed with 2020 Pokemon cards, meaning it was resealed recently, at a, such a high level that Lean Heart does not realize. Lean Heart, one again, one of the most popular YouTubers, if not the most popular Pokemon YouTuber, does not realize there's a problem. That would scare me if I was investing in Magic the Gathering boxes, if I was investing in Pokemon boxes. Because again, these are supposed experts selling you the box that clearly was fake. So if the experts have no idea if the box is real or not, how are you going to have any idea if the box is real or not? I mean, you do not. You simply do not have that understanding. Um, and it's... It's sad. It is... I mean, I don't want to take anything away from it. This is truly, truly sad. But at the same time, I get it. Whenever there's a quick dollar to be made, you can be sure that there are a line of scammers ready to make that quick dollar. Most people don't work hard. Uh, many of these scammers do not work hard because they're used to getting a quick flip and then dealing. I mean, imagine you buying this box and it turns out to be fake a few years later. You can't get a refund. Just like what happened to the guy in Black Lotus with eBay. You know, he sold a Black Lotus. It was a real Black Lotus. He sent it. The guy who received it, who went then went on a YouTuber's channel, claimed, again, I don't know why he did that. He got an automatic refund, and eBay sided with him. Um, the buyer was perfectly, I mean, he has a long, long criminal record of very bad things that he's done. And yet, and this is why I no longer sell on eBay, because you can't control who your buyer is. There's no way you can control who your buyer is or even know who they are, their name or something like that. So the person buying your Black Lotus could be a Nazi criminal record, dirty convictions. And honestly, that's probably more likely than not when it comes to buying a Black Lotus. And it's not enough that they got a good deal because that was a good deal. I think that's like $8,000 for a Black Lotus. That was a pretty good deal. Um, it's not enough that they got a good deal during COVID-19 and this person is selling what he has. I mean, obviously they need money. You don't sell Black Lotus unless you really need cash. And he's probably strapped for cash because he was selling other magic cards, which again, he was ripped off again and again and again. Um, it just makes me sad. 
you know, it just makes me sad because these people are not going to be around in a hobby. They're not producing videos every day. They're not going to be around very much longer. As soon as the money dries up, they're gone. So it's like a snake. It's like the a snake's uh, snake oil salesman. As soon as the town wises up, you you pack your bags, you move you out of Dodds, and you sell go to the next city to sell your snake oil. Um, but it is sad that they drag down people. I mean, but at the same time, they got greedy. Leanheart, I don't even know why he's there. I don't know why he makes videos with this collectible guru character and his crypto friends. I mean, as no, again, I look at their age of these people. I look at supposedly their, their wealth and what they have. I mean, it doesn't really make too much sense to me. Like the, the Asian guy was saying that he invests in medical device. It's like, what? You're like 24. And you're telling me that you have all these investments in crypto, Forex trading. You're some type of day trading guru. Again, most day traders lose their mo lose money, so it's not an easy thing to do. And you're selling a four hundred thousand dollar box of Pokemon cards that you were certain of that they want to open. Yet they opened it, and essentially everyone in this table, their honesty is now in jeopardy. Their reputation is now in jeopardy because you do not want to be associated with a fake box in any way.